and I'm going to turn it over to you, Danielle. Thank you, Felicia. Hi, everyone. Happy um, Halloween weekend. <laughs> We're kicking off our Friday Halloween weekend with a really fun beading project. That will be a great gift idea. So if you've got lots of gifts to make, this is the project to use up your seed beads and create something that's unique and can be customized for your recipient by using whatever color palettes they like. This was a fall version that I did. It's the one that's in the handout. And it is the apricot mix. And so this one is um, really, really quick and easy to make. And it's just three colors. But you could do um, any colors you like, any combination. You could do like a solid color or just mix it up randomly. Um, and you can do patterns. That's another really fun thing you can do with this design. And so, so many places you can take it. I'm thinking we'll, um, we'll demo it with three colors the way that it's demoed here, but with something brighter that you can see on, um, on my mat here. And then um, if uh, anyone has any questions or needs me to slow down, of course, you've got Carmi and Millie in the chat. And of course, as Felicia said, any tech questions, you can ask Felicia in the chat. All right. Um, and so here on the mat, I've got the colors I'm going to use. I grabbed a bunch. I think I'm probably going to just pull out the dark iris blue from this one. I think that might look kind of neat. Um, so this is the deep sea mix. Um, and this one is our um, just yellow, opaque yellow. And then this is that really beautiful kind of like chalk purple violet color. And I thought that would be kind of a cool Halloween little combo that we can get going. And so the other things you'll need besides the seed beads, um, you'll want to have our usual, let's see, this is the thread, the Wildfire 0.006. Size 10 beading needles are good. 12s are great too. Um, and then some ear wires, you're also going to want to have a set of jump rings handy. And the jump rings are just so you can have the disc facing forward. Um, the way that we attach it, you'll need a jump ring to go through that little top size eight bead. And then you can use lever back ear wires, which is what I have here. Or you can use any kind of ear wires that you have handy. And let's see, the only other tools you're going to want to have around are, you'll want to have some scissors, and then some tools for opening and closing jump rings and flattening our threads. So I like to use these square nose pliers, and I like to use these bent nose for my jump rings. All right, let's dive in. Um, you'll need to cut about 30 inches of thread, and 30 inches is actually the perfect amount. You'll have just enough left to weave in. Um, you'll leave about a seven inch tail at the beginning. So for me, that's like one arm's length. So that's about usually what I measure it to. And then for threading my needle, I'm just gonna go ahead and get my square nose pliers. I'm gonna flatten the end of it. And my beading needle here. That usually helps it thread really nicely. I'm just gonna fold that over. And I think for my center color, I'm gonna go with the deep iris color. Or maybe the, I was torn between the iris and the cobalt, but I think the iris will contrast more with our purple. In there. Okay, and so you'll wanna pick up a total of five beads. And again, these are size eight, and this mix is the deep sea mix that I've got going here. So you just wanna pick up five. And then you're going to go back through all those beads again, remembering to leave yourself about, you know, five to seven inches or so. You'll need to just weave this in and it won't be, um, you won't need tons to weave in. So just a little bit. And I'm just going to go back through all those. Super easy technique today. I'm just going to keep it simple and stick to the, you know, change the color every ring pattern so you can clearly tell what, um, what ring is which. Oh, sorry, that went flying. There we go. But as you're working these, you'll be thinking, and that the first thing I thought was, wow, you can do all kinds of different patterns. And additionally, you don't have to start with five. You can start with three or, you know, two or, well, two would be a little, you want it to be round, but um, five and three are the numbers I've tried. There's probably other combinations. I believe that would work as well. So there's my round one. And I went back through the first bead I strung to get it to overlap so that my thread is exiting from the same bead as my tail thread. And that just helps me tighten everything. 
And so now I'll switch to, switch to the bright yellow. So this is row two. And what we're gonna do next is put two size eight beads in between each of these that we've just created in the, in the first ring. And so it's a, a really pretty little pattern here. I love this color combo. So there's two. There's my third one. And every round, there's going to be more beads to add. So each round will take just a little bit longer than the one before it as it grows. And I think for tension, it actually helps to hold it the way I'm holding it. But definitely try different ways, see what works for you. Sometimes when I'm making these, depending on the type of beads I'm using, if they don't want to just automatically pop for me, Oh, you know what I did, guys? I just realized I was supposed to add one bead and then start the twos. That's why it's not working for me. Wait one second here. I'm going to back out of that. I took my needle off to undo my mistake here. Hey, Danielle. Hey. I want to let you know that your loyal fan, Kylie, caught the mistake just as you were making it. She did. Oh, you guys got a shout out of me. Can you? I, I, I would have, but um, you, she typed it just as you found it. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why they weren't popping into place. And then I realized. I and, just... uh, I, and I want to let you know, Pat has already um, looking. She's already had the PDF going and she's finished her first earrings. Oh, my goodness. And, That's uh, awesome. Had no problems because, of course, your instructions are awesome. I should follow them though, right? <laughs> there we go. So that second round should just have one bead and that will make life way easier. I'm like, why are these going? But um, yeah, another thing that as you won't notice it as much um, in the first couple of rows, but when you get going, if you get to like the third, fourth rows and you notice it starts to kind of fold or you know, wave a little bit, sometimes I put it flat on a hard surface and work you know, pull, you know, maybe pull the stitches to kind of create some tension with it flat. And I've noticed that helps. So what that would look like is I would just, let's see if I can make that go. Just kind of flatten it down. Maybe not, not on the mat, but on something, you know, like a hardwood or a firmer surface, but yeah. Okay, so that's what I was supposed to do. You just put one bead in between each. And then what I did at the last step is I stepped up through the first bead that I added in that round, in round two. And now round three is where I'm supposed to add two beads each. Let's get that one out. So I'll switch to the, that little violet purple color. And there, that's going to fit much better, those two. All right, and so here's the last one, and I'm just going to automatically keep going through the first bead that we strung in round three. And that's what we call stepping up. You'll hear that in a lot of our round stitches and our rope stitches. We call that a step up. So it just starts making this really cool mandala flower. And I'm going to switch back to my blue color. Let's go back to that iris color here. And I'm actually going to look at my instructions and make sure I don't skip a step. This is one. We're going to put one in between every space. So now our spaces are going to start to look a little bit different because we started introducing combinations of one and two. So one between each one, including this one, right? So all the way around. So here's what that looks like. Okay. 
And of course, these counts are ones that what I did is just sat around and played with what counts would work and, and stay flat, right? Because what you'll notice is it'll start to dome. And if it's doming, you know, I would pull out that, that row and try to go back and change up my counts to get it to be flat, especially if you're starting with a different number of beads. So this one's starting with five. A lot of the ones I do start with three. And so those, the counts are different in each ring. But you really do have to play with it. And just see what you like. Almost there. Another thing I do is I just start pulling my tail out of the way. I don't quite have enough, um, you know, bead rows made yet for me to feel like I can weave it in. And I tend to do it at the end anyway. But if you wanted to weave in your tail, you could try to do that. Probably after this step, I think. All right, here's my last bead. And if it'll let me, I'm going to continue through the first one I strung in this ring. Didn't quite make it, so we'll go through on a second pass. There we go. Okay. And it's starting to do the little, you know, Pringle potato chip thing, but I'm just flattening it. Yep. Okay, so this next one's a little different. You're going to start with two and then one, two and then one for the pattern. So you'll put two size eight beads and then one. And we're just going to follow that pattern all the way around. I'm just going to alternate adding two and then adding one. <laughs> well, hello there. You wanted to be part of the show. <laughs> All right, last one. And I stepped up through the first bead we added. There we go. And so we're going to do two more rounds. And each of those rounds just has one bead in each round in between every single one we just added, including our doubles there. So there's one. Oops, there we go. And so there are, there's some advanced patterns you can do in this technique where um, you can form shapes. And if you wanted to form a shape, basically the way it's done is instead of adding a bead, you would weave down and skip that spot. And if you do that, then you end up with points. And you can really play with that to make something look like, for example, petals or star points or you know, there's a lot of possibility. And I, I have some ideas and I've done some patterns like that. And there's a lot of great inspo out there from other artists too, who have done similar patterns. Another really cool thing I saw someone do is they made like a yin yang pattern in it or half of it kind of like swirled. So there's so many cool things. There's that tail. Let's get the tail. There we go. I'm just got one more to go. And stepping up through that first bead. That will be strong in that round. Okay, now I am going to try doing a little flattening over here. 
I'm just moving it over to the side. What I did is I flattened it on the on the wood surface next to my mat just to kind of get it to you know attain a little bit. What it does, and I do that after every round from here on out. What it does is I feel like it kind of tames the threads, and it teaches them to stay flat. Um, versus if I did it at the end, there'd be a whole lot more. Um, you know how when you're trying to adjust thread, uh, if you try to do it four steps from where you start, that you're going to have a stuck loop, right? A loop of thread that's not going to be tight, and you can't tighten it no matter how hard you pull. Yeah, the same is true for getting the flat tension. So every row now between this one and the next two, I'm just pulling it off the mat here, putting it on the desk and flattening it. So try that if you're having that um, kind of whisper pop up in your design. So we do have one more row of just singles. And if you ever lose your place, um, you can use the, the places where two is introduced as kind of like a, you know, a, a mark on the map to see where you were. If you have to set it down and come back and you can't remember where you were in the pattern. Or if you're live and you can't remember what you did two seconds ago. <laughs> tail out of the way there. Just gonna, just gonna do some housekeeping here. These guys are about to jump off the mat. Okay. And another blue. Coming along really nice. Last one, and I'm gonna try to step up if it will let me. And it did. So just stepping up right there. All right. Okay. And so this is our last row. I'm going to take it off the mat one more time. I'm going to flatten it just to make sure it's the tension's working out for me. And it looks like my last row is going to end up being my yellow color. So this is a new uh, new combination. It's two, two, one. So we're going to add two, add two, and then one. And that'll be between each bead. And we'll just go all the way around. There's two and two, and then there's one. And we'll just keep going. And so a lot of you are probably wondering, well, can I keep going after this? And yeah, absolutely. It starts getting a little challenging to keep it flat. So you really have to play with your counts. And I, I've done some where they're maybe four or five rounds bigger than the one we've got here. And when I do those, I end up doing kind of really, really playing with these numbers. So here we've got two, two, one, which is kind of weird, two, two, one, but I have some where it's like two and then you, you do three singles and then two and then three singles. And it, it really depends where, it starts to matter where the, um, the, the branches are down here, right? They start to feed up. And after a while, you'll you'll just get a feeling for how, um, where to place those twos and ones to make it stay flat, if that makes any sense. But like all of these things are a couple tries and you'll have a thousand ideas. All right, and now I'm gonna add one more. And I'm going to step up if it'll let me. 
Okay, so there's our earring. One more flattening off the mat here. That's pretty flat. I'm loving the color. And so this next part is, you know, it's an optional thing, but I liked the look of it and it made it easier for me to put my ear wire on it. And so what I did is I just picked up another bead from here and went back through. And it's not reinforced, it just has one strand going through it. But what I sometimes do is I'll bring my tail up, I'll weave my tail up and go through it one more time. So what I'm gonna do first is weave in this strand, just gonna do it really quick. And this is one of those designs where, you know, it's so fast to make and weaving in is wonderful. I don't recommend, you know, against weaving in, but if you wanted to do a knot, there's a really easy way to do it. Um, another trick for getting through your beads, once they're in this configuration and they start to get really tight, you're gonna have a hard time getting your needle through like this, right? Trying to get your needle through like that, you're gonna be just like going a little crazy. And it's gonna kind of mess up your flat disc and you don't wanna do that either. So what I do to get through them is I go down. So I went through just one bead there, but I'm taking my needle out the other side. And that is the, the least resistance path for getting through any bead you want. Again, just going down through the next one and following my thread path. And then I just keep flipping it so I can get where I wanna go. And if it lets me go through, great. Then I'll go there, but the outsides are easier. So here um, I've got the thread exiting from these little, a section of two, right? Those are good places to knot. And here's why, your knot's gonna hide and it's already gonna have kind of a point to it. So if you half hitch knot, which is just pulling up a loop, try to keep that knot in between those two beads. That's a good place to knot. It kind of hides it a little bit. And then go ahead and bring your, you know, your needle through a few beads. You can repeat that if you want, or you can just trim it. So I'm just gonna trim right there, pushing down on the scissors, pulling up on that thread for some tension, get that to you know, jump back in there. And now let's work with the tail. And so I'm gonna try to bring my tail up to meet this point so I can reinforce it one time. One time, I feel like one time is plenty. These earrings do not weigh a lot, they're really light. And you also need to leave a little bit of room in that bead to get your jump ring through. So it looks like I'm going, just trying to figure out which way I'm going. So I wanna go this way, using that little trick to get through it. And this gets easier over here. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a ways to go, but it's not too far. I'm trying to remember where I am. So right now I'm just trying to bring myself to the top here. And I'm there, okay. So I'm just gonna make one last little trip through my bead where I'm gonna hang my, um, my ear wire from. Okay, okay, let me go through. And my thread is getting super short, so I'm definitely gonna wanna knot. Try to get over here. 
So my tail may have been closer to about five inches than seven. Seven inches will give you a little more to work with or try to weave a little less circuitous path than I did maybe, but I'm determined. Let's get that through there. All right, there's my half hitch knot. And I wanna go through a few beads with that before I cut it. So I threaded it because it's very short. I know you guys have all done this where you let your tail get too short. There we go. Go through one more if I can. But no. okay. And there it is. I'm gonna flatten one more time. And let's trim that. Ooh, pretty. Okay, and so the jump rings I'm using are just the regular six millimeter jump rings. And get my tools. I was gonna try to open that jump ring with my needle. <laughs> that wouldn't have worked. So I use like a lateral motion with jump rings. Um, if anyone's new to jump rings, they come usually kind of closed, not totally closed, but a little bit. And I open them in a, a lateral direction so that it preserves the circle. And let's just go ahead and bring it through here. And before I close it, I wanna grab my ear wires. I'm using these lever backs. You can use any that you like. I thought these were really cute. And they stay on. Kind of nice. If you have a favorite side, it should be the same front and back, but if you have a favorite side, you can point your, your wire in that direction. of a strand somewhere. Hey, Danielle. Hey. Wanted to let you know Sidebar is loving the project. Um, we actually really, really love the colors that you chose, even though you chose them so that they would just look great on camera. They actually, they look great in this earring. Oh, thanks. And so, yes, we, I think, um, I think if you're going to do this project, you should keep your uh, instructions handy. And of course, everyone's starting to think ahead. Could they do this with a bigger bead or a smaller bead? And do you think the counts would be the same or would they change? I think the counts would stay the same. Like, for example, if you went to an 11-0, 6-0, um, I've noticed with 6-0, things tend to get a little more um, wonky, but they could, it could still work. Okay. That's what we're saying on the sidebar too. But I do think it's possible. And you can also adjust the counts. Like for a 6-0 design, maybe it would make sense to start with three and play with that and see because it would be less, um, you know, less beads trying to, um, whenever you have variation, the more times you multiply variation, the bigger your variation is going to get, right? So if you started with three, you're going to have less going on than starting with five. But yeah, don't, I would just say try it because that's how all these things happen is, um, you know, we just sit, we sit there on our bead mat and we come up with it just from playing and so much possibility and patterns. And I can't wait to see what everybody does with, um, you know, color. So Danielle, in terms of timing today, I'm just imagining if we all get really good at doing this, we, we should be able to make a pair of earrings in one hour, which yeah. in the bead world is amazing to have a beaded gift in an hour. Mm -hmm. So that would be the plan. So with the time that we have today, I think um, the great thing is if you would just show everybody the first steps for starting, we don't have to make a full earring again, but I would love everyone to leave today's class knowing how to just go. Sounds great, yeah. I think one of the cool things you can do with this also is change you know, the counts and make a smaller one. So let's, let's play with that. Let's try to make a smaller one and see you know, just stop a little early in our design and see what happens with my thread here. I cut a little bit less.
And Daniela, I want to let you know that Laura said she wasn't sure she'd be able to do the class because she's um, had a surgery. Um, oh, no. you, you've made it so easy. She's already been able to make one earring. Oh, really? Oh, that's really great to hear. That makes my day. All right, guys, I'm going to plug this in. It's, it looks like it's going to my battery. There we go. Good deal. Battery was there. I had a charger already, though. OK. All right, so let's start with, let's think about this for a second. We're gonna do the same counts. Um, and you guys tell me when you think we can, I'm gonna switch the colors up. So uh, I cut about, I cut a little less than 30 inches in the um, handout, it says 30 inches for the full size design, which is this one. And that ends up being pretty perfect. Um, leave a little more tail than I did. I left closer to five inches. You probably really do wanna go with, with the seven that's called out in the handout or even more like 10 just to give yourself a little extra. Um, and then string five on that strand, bring it down. I'm leaving that extra tail that I talked about. And I'm going back through all those beads again. So string them, go through all of them, and then go back again through the first one. And then you'll want to string one bead in between each one. So just the one bead for this round. Well, that's a pretty combo too. Oh, I like that. Another cool thing to do is putting them together. I was just thinking about that as well. Like you could stack them. The same way we we've, we've done techniques like that before, where we caught caught a bead where we were going to add one, we just caught one on the other on the other piece. Um, that's how you would connect them if you wanted to. You'd make the first one and then come along and catch it. Okay, so there's round two, and that's just uh, one bead in between each of the beads we started with. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to the bright yellow. And this is the one where you wanna put two in between each one. And you'll, you'll start to see it as you're working on this. Like if you didn't have a pattern, you would just automatically be like, yeah, I'm gonna put two there because it, it looks good and it makes sense. And it's the same, tr same true when you're working out past the point where our pattern ends, if you wanted to play with that. I feel like it kind of naturally just tells you how many to add and where, and that works out. I'm gonna fold that over. And stepping up. So I went through my last bead and stepped up through the first one that we added in that round. And there's, oh, that looks really cool, I like that. And so the next round, it's just a single bead in every spot. So in between every single yellow bead, we need to put a single bead. I'm out of my iris blue, so I'm switching to some aqua. Let's play with that and see how cute that looks. You can see alternating it. something I wish existed and I think I think I'm just going to have to create it because I can't find it I want a blank pattern you know what I mean like a graph in this configuration so you could color it in with colored pencils and make your own pattern and so um right after I Carmi, right after I do my report <laughs> I'm going to actually make that graph because how cool would that be for you to be able to sketch your design and then stitch it I'll, I'll create that and post it. I'll probably have to do it in Illustrator because my other program that does my, um, you know, like my peyote patterns, it doesn't do a round like this. Or if you guys know of one that does, let me know. I was playing with it yesterday and couldn't figure out how to get it to do that. Like it'll do tubes, but it won't do um, a flat round. Okay, 
So there's, there's that one. And so now we're gonna do a round that's two, one, two, one, two, one. Hey, Danielle, a um, couple people are going to make gifts for younger kids. Yeah. So they won't, they'll, they'll stop um, when it's smaller. So almost the size that you're at right now would be great kid size. Yeah, I was thinking this is a good stopping point because we want to stop on one where we have some twos so we can do our ear wire ad. Because the next two rounds after this are singles. And so we'd have to get creative to put that little pop-up bead, you know, to do our, um, our ear wire jump ring thing. Well, then I think with this one, you should, you should make this, this stop and, yeah. um, and let's call this kid size. Perfect. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So there's, there's my last bead and I'm stepping up through the first one that we had in that round. And there it is a little mini one. If you want to get a scale, here's the big size. And there's the mini. I would actually wear one size bigger on one side. It's gonna look kind of cool. Another thing you can do is you can layer them. There's just so many things. And you can pillow stitch them together if you really want to get crazy. We've done something like that in a, a super duo button. But if you took that class, you'll have um, a memory of how we did that. That's um, kind of a cool idea. You could put like a little gemstone in it or trinket or. Okay, I'm not going to do a full weave in. I'm going to do a lazy weave in so we can see it. I'm going to do the half inch knot here. Pull up a loop, go through the loop. And I'm gonna just try to get out of my way and trim it. Danielle, I, it's so good that you taught us how to make the smaller one. I think, um, you know, I think it's gonna be really handy for anybody that's making smaller gifts. And that tip on where, where to stop is brilliant. Oh, thanks. And it actually is really pretty size too. I mean, even for an adult too, not, not just for a kid, because it's less bulky. I do love a statement earring though, and I forgot to put my ear wire on, but yeah, but you guys get the idea. Yeah, we've got a couple of people that, that definitely are very happy to wear the smaller one. So that is a great um, second option for this project and even more faster gifts. So that's great. Yeah. Well, those are cute together too. I like them. They're still doing pretty good for time. Is there any other very, I could show, I'm trying to think of, um, I don't know, Carmen, what do you think for? Okay. Well, Danielle, a couple of things. Um, because this is gonna be gifting, um, I wanted to just make, check in with you on how you would package this up. Right, yeah. So the packaging, I was, I'm pretty excited to share that actually, because it's something that I just discovered. Um, I found, so this is craft paper. You know, those little scrapbook in the scrapbook sections, I'm gonna raise myself up just a little, just a little bit here. There we go. So yeah, in the scrapbooking section, they have lots of um, cool cardstock paper with prints on the outside. And what I did is I scored it so I could fold it and made a little earring card that folds over on itself. And so there, there's the back and it's got those holes. I did purchase the earring punch and there's two versions. There's, there's, there's a, a single hole and then they have a hole that could be for lever backs. That earring punch is in, it's actually in the jewelry section the under tools and kind of the same place you'd find bead mats. You'll find that um, earring punch there. And then um, I did this with the printmaker. And that's a new tool that they just came out with at Michael's. And I've been playing with it. I just discovered how to use it. And you can print any personalized message you want inside of 
your card and then score the sides. So you can buy okay, So Danielle, uh, sidebar loves this as a gifting idea. So num number one, the card stock is at Michael's mm -hmm. in the scrapbooking section. And obviously there's Christmas paper and Christmas colors. So that would be great for us um, yeah. to pick up that and you scored it. So now how did you get that font or that quote inside? And that is one of the, um, on the printmaker app, which you install when you get the printmaker, I'm gonna move my mat out of the way really quick. When you install that, you um, get a bunch of like built-in options that you can use. And so that was one of them. You can also import your own logo. If you want to write your own text, you can put that in there and change the font. And you can add, you know, clip art, um, other kinds of decorations. I pre-built I pre in one of the designs. This is what it looks like. And just a cool little, cool little mini printer. It comes with a lot of different accessories that I haven't tried yet, but this is the basic functionality. I'm gonna turn it on. Okay. And it's just thinking. So I'm gonna ask it to create that print again. And it'll remember the last one you did. Okay. Once it's green, green means go. And it's just really fun. And so you could like write, um, you know, I love you mom or anything that you wanted to say personal to your gifty and then just print it custom for them. You can also put your designer logo, which is another cool thing to do if you're branding. Um, and thank you to your customers. You know, um, I have not tried, but they have ribbon and a washi tape. Like you can print on washi tape, ribbon. Um, and so really sky's the limit you can make gift tags. And I don't know, I was thinking you could even use it in jewelry. Like you could print something and then like a uh, resin on top of it or lots of cool things, lots of different fonts and things like that. Danielle, yeah. I think, I think we all, we're, we're loving it on the sidebar. I realize it's not a printmaker class, but for a lot of uh, jewelry designers, I think this is great. If you have a side business going, you could actually make the earrings and then personalize the message in the card. Um, name of the customer or, or name of the family member you're giving it to. So it is a handy gadget. And I think it just makes um, your finished design that much more professional. Yeah, it really does. I'm really grateful for the chance to try it out because it's, it's game changing for making earring cards. I love making packaging. It's kind of something that I get excited about anyway. And so and Danielle, do, do you happen to have that punch handy that you use to make the yes, holes? I do. Can I grab it really quick? Yeah, it's right here. We've, we've showed it once or twice before because it, it, of course, you can make a hole punch with other tools, but this makes them perfect. There's two that I have. So this one, both of these are in the um, tool section. Like if you go look where pliers are and bead mats, this is the one that just makes the single holes. That's the one I use to make this one. But if you have lever backs, like for example, our design here was made with a lever back earring, you would want to use this one. And that one is really cool. It's, I'll show you what it looks like real quick. Now I can put my lever backs on there. And it's also more secure, so you're not gonna lose. Like if you travel for your shows and your holiday bazaars and things like that, you won't have to worry about them falling off. Or you could also use those little stoppers, you know, the little earring pegs. I always forget what they're called, but those little plastic things you put on the end. Yeah, there's another way you could do it. And then I would score that and then fold it over so that my pretty paper shows on the other side little gift card and if you're worried about how to center it I know that was actually something I struggled with getting it centered I didn't bother worrying about centering it I actually printed it first and then did my scoring around it by measuring afterward <laughs> so you can play with that and see what, what works for you 
but yeah, there's, there's just so many things I could, I could get lost in ideas with all of these wonderful things. I need like, you know, 48 hour days. <laughs> so Danielle, just watching, watching the sidebar, um, many, many thanks um, for the class and um, taking the class. So I, I just want to tell you that um, one of the things I just saw Cindy say that she's actually using that earring punch on a business card. Um, which also makes it pretty and simple. And then her information is there. So that is awesome. That's a great um, idea. We, we did great for time in this class today, which gives you, Danielle, a little bit of time to show some of our new people um, the upcoming class, which is a little more complicated. Yeah. I'm going to bring my mat. Oh, yeah. So we can do it here, too. Um, the next week's class is one of the premium classes. And so it is one for, um, let me show you my earrings. This is the class next week. It's called Boutique Pendant. And this is the earring version of the pendant, but we have a really cool pendant version over here. That's just so many cool things you can do. And this chain that is um, used to display it makes a really cool wrap bracelet. And these are kind of like buttonholes. So if you have a very fancy button that you'd like to use, you can make a wrap bracelet with this stitch. So we'll we'll learn that stitch. We'll learn making the pendant, which can be an earring. And then we'll put it all together in our two hour workshop, which is next, next Friday. So it's coming up. And then uh, let's see, after that, we have another earring class. So the earring class after that could also be, it could also be an ornament or like a gift tag, but it is a, um, cool super duo like nested design and each of these um, components that I'm showing here can be an earring by themselves so just a ring or just a little center so lots of cool things you can do there the class after that is another really fun one where we're just going to do right angle weave with some charms so there's a fun way to add charms to your right angle weave designs that color's not really popping very much but um let me grab my purple one Purple one's a little easier to see, I feel like. Oh, actually, great. Thanks, Felicia. Um, yeah, so here's the purple one. And let me go ahead and pull it off. So that's just a lot easier to see that way. With the stitching just kind of going around and then we'll make those little chains. Um, sorry, those little wire wraps. We'll do that too. Those are just done on some little head bins. And then we, we string it, so yeah. Here's that one and um, not on the agenda yet, but I'm actually planning to teach some version of the necklace I'm wearing as a class. Carmi, can I show it? Yes. All right, I'm gonna take it off and put it on the mat. If anyone's interested in seeing it up close. So I was down to the wire finishing this one the other day, but I really had my heart set on it. And what it is, is it's just bead embroidery, kind of similar to what you know we've done for the beaded eye class we had. But I use a little bit of a different technique, which is kind of like longer strands dropping. And then I did tack them, but not as not as much. Like they're they're kind of free. They're on red stiffened felt. It's all size six, and there's a little size 11 buried in there, kind of just for space and interest. And uh, then I did a brick stitch all around it. And I used this really cool sparkly black felt that I found in, um, it's a little, in the craft section where all the felt is, you'll find this kind of sparkle. It really glows and sparkles in, in the light. So I was kind of excited about that. This is a black pearl strands. You know how they come in like graduated size strands on the strand wall? I just kind of did that with B-Lawn. That's B-Lawn inside of it, knotted. And then I used a clamshell finding to cover up my knot. So this could be, um, you know, in the, probably closer to the spring, we'll do a spring version for a workshop, I think. We'll come up with that. And this, this one is Carmi's. I'm mailing it on the day. <laughs> so that's for you, Carmi. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, of course, we've got December. And we do. Uh, December, we'll, we'll start showing those classes soon because we have a couple of show stoppers. Um, but uh, the last December class, we're going to show them how to make something really fast if they really didn't really do fast. anything in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, I need to make those. Um, I'm gonna you know, make new versions of them 
and uh, I'll have them ready to show, um, you know, maybe next class or the class after that, I think. Perfect. Yeah. So again, Danielle, thank you for everything. Sidebar is very happy and oh, thanks, uh, got lots of great comments today. Millie's reposting um, next week's premium class if um, people haven't seen it yet. And now we're getting some happy Halloween wishes. So, uh, you know, I'll join yeah. everyone. Have a great Halloween weekend. And Danielle, great class. Can't wait to make my earrings. Oh, thank you so much. And happy Halloween, everyone. I'll see you next week. <laughs>